Hey, I think I'm good. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks to everybody for uh, welcoming my daughter. It was a little bit of a, a change up that we had with the schedule today. I know you were expecting this guy here, um, Alan Smithson, who uh, is a, my husband, Abby's dad, and he had to extend his, uh, his current trip. So he sends his apologies, but I'm here to give his presentation in his place and hope I can do the honors of, uh, of replacing him. So once again, my name is Julie. I'm the co-founder of XR Ignite and Metaverse. Um, I'm also the co-president of the VR ARA uh, Toronto chapter, and I actually hold the co-chair position of the education committee on a global level, building best practices and global standards for the XR industry. So I want to introduce you uh, to our Metaverse family of companies. Um, that include Metaverse, uh, which is our development house, building strategies, consulting, and building custom developments. Um, we also have uh, LearnXR, which is going to be our education platform, in which our mission is to democratize education by 2040. XR Ignite is our, co uh, is our company that we founded to support XR startups, like many of yourselves, who are creating amazing things um, we are lucky enough to be put into the position of being able to connect the XR startups with enterprises looking for solutions to build XR for their businesses. And then lastly, we have XR for Business. And if you haven't heard of that, it's a podcast, uh, both available on um, iOS and Android. Um, I think Alan's at about 100 different interviews to date and all talking to major uh, industry leaders on how they're developing XR for their business. So if you're looking for a way to learn, uh, following his XR for Business podcast would be a great way. We're also writing two books on XR, XR for Education and XR for Business. Through our passion of understanding how the applications of XR technologies are to be applied, um, we have within the, our network a wealth of knowledge of how we'll be able to produce this and pull this together. So we look forward to sharing those. So why XR? Why now? And as you can see through uh, this graph, um, the hype cycle of technology and where we've come from in 1990 and uh, through the 2000s and where we are today, being at 2020, it seems like so, such a surreal year that it embarks on us where we talked about the year 2020 and it seemed like something in the movies and here we are with less than 30 days until this year approaches and the hype cycle is certainly in full swing as we all know. So um, coming through the industrial revolution of technology you know from water and steam mechanic uh, mechanizing production there um, through electrical power automating production and computer and electronics now we're at the beginning of the industrial revolution number four. So with Martex law, obviously we are looking at a change rate of the way that we are about to not only operate in our businesses, but how we're going to learn. And uh, the technology is changing at a, an exponential rate, as many of you know. So um, the gap is widening on how we're going to learn this. And it's great that you're all sitting here today, um, but how do we, Ex grow this community of people who need to understand all of these technologies and how to apply, how to build with them, and uh, bring those solutions back into the enterprise sector. So back in 2017, you can see where the hype cycle started uh, with augmented and virtual reality, and it didn't seem like such a, a big deal back then. And then we hit 2018, and mixed reality was thrown in there, as well as augmented reality. And um, based on 2019, um, this is the hype cycle for emerging technologies right now. So as you can see, we've, we're really at the peak of inflated interest of this technology. And everybody's, I don't want to use the word scramble, but everybody's trying to figure out how do we build this. And, you know, speaking with or listening to our speakers today, taking all of those pieces of um, education and putting them together to be able to build uh, the resources that we need to move forward through this, uh, this new evolution. So as many, as you, many of you know, um, 5G is approaching as well. So 
you know, we had the 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G. Um, hitting 5G, we're going to be looking at 1,000 times of the speed. So we're now looking at 1,000 times of learning and the amount of content that's going to be coming at us at a great pace. How are we going to manage that, and how are we going to change learning for everybody? So looking at the brick phone phase, I'm sure some of you can relate to some of these. Uh, we are here, and now we're about to converge all these technologies together. Everything from 5G, cloud, IoT, AI, blockchain, and VR and AR. The AR and VR spending forecast globally um, is going to be massive. So, you know, a lot of people like to talk about the consumer applications of this technology, um, but really it's where industry will move the whole industry, our industry, forward in implementing these technologies into business use cases. So the growth in the industry spending by 2023 is supposed to go to 134%. These are some examples of where you will see augmented through XR by industry and where we will see the most beneficial, uh, beneficial ways of using this technology. And even though business services and financial services are on the lower end, there's still, uh, there's still applications out there that we'll be using towards these services, but seeing health and social services, manufacturing, construction, that's where we'll see the real money start to be invested in any time now. So XR offers the greatest augmentation opportunities. Um, and if you kind of look at this, you know, everything from empathy and support, the science and engineering, um, the technical equipment maintenance, there's so many different applications that this technology can apply to in, uh, in industrial and even in soft skills training for, uh, for multiple industries. So the promise of XR training. So this is something that Metaverse is focusing on. Oh, I don't know why that's there. Interesting. I don't know why that little thing is there. Sorry. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, the promise of XR training. So this is something that's uh, obviously really uh, prominent right now with industry and, and how they're going to apply these technologies into their work process as processes and uh, implement them and you know some of the benefits there are lower costs to deliver easier to update the travel costs are immense that's one of the top um, top points of benefits when we share with uh, industry clients is is the travel costs alone already save uh, an immense amount of um, budgeting uh, increases uh, lower turnover, longer attentions, and uh, employees can learn at their own, own pace, higher employee satisfaction, and obviously this technology can be highly scalable. So learning retention rates, and I'll quote ben Benjamin Franklin here, teach me and I will forget, show me and I will learn, involve me and I will understand. And as we all probably grew up with the top four uh, for nodules there um, in our schools, it's obvious already that VR training brings a higher retention rate uh, by actually doing the experiences, and that's where VR training comes in. <clears throat> and you'll see even by the, uh, the models of the, the brains, that it's definitely more active when you use AR tasks as opposed to non-AR tasks. Types of immersive training. So we've got 360 video, VR, which is kind of the, the low end of things. Um, it's easy to deploy. Everybody's kind of played around with uh, 360 photo capture and video and requires a headset. Um, it's not really editable, but it can give a great scope to a product or an experience or um, any kind of, um, uh, environment that you need to showcase. So it's, it's a great way to train people who have never been in a situation before. Uh, mobile phone AR is where I see a huge potential. Uh, there's going to be, uh, I think it's 2.5 billion devices that will be um, active with augmented reality by the end of this year. And I personally see augmented reality being a huge, um, a huge way to implement 
into the schools, especially K to 12. Um, not having to deal with headsets in the younger grades, this is a benefit right there, but being able to provide experiences through augmented reality applications that can be done in a safe environment that kids can interact with. Every single kid you know probably has an iPad or some touch device already, and they probably know more than even the parents. So I can see mobile phone AR becoming um, not only a great tool for industry, but for education. Uh, right at the grade levels. Uh, then you've got CGI virtual reality, and um, this obviously costs a little bit more, and uh, there's longer development times, uh, requires VR headsets, and obviously a lot of other aspects to the development that take a deeper dive into the actual development itself. And then you've got mixed reality, like the HoloLens and, and Magic Leap, where the development's a lot longer, uh, but the impact, the impact on uh, mixed reality uh, devices in the learning sector will be, uh, will be unsurmountable and used in situations like remote support and things like that that will benefit not only the, the working force but the aging workforce where they can support um, more of the field workers as they begin to retire. Considerations when building XR. So, um, I know some of the speakers today have touched on some of these things, but uh, becoming device agnostic, always building for the software and not for the hardware, knowing that the hardware can expire at any time and a new one introduced any day now. Uh, natural interactions, making sure that things inside these experiences are very natural and not, uh, not foreign so that they're not adopted or even discovered within the experience. Enterprise security um, is another one. Um, and that kind of goes down a whole level of cybersecurity. Performance analytics, this will be really important in all of the training applications um, to be able to evaluate the performance of the, uh, of the uh, employee worker and um, not only with time, but efficiency as well. Uh, predictive experiences um, are also um, really going to be important to be able to give the what-if scenarios inside of these experiences. Um, and being contextually aware, uh, real-time collaboration is obviously gonna be key, a uh, key component, like um, uh, Dan was mentioning in, the, in his presentation, where remote teams can collaborate on certain experiences of design. And then digital asset management will be the other thing. And that kind of leads into a whole management series of how you're going to manage your 3D assets. <clears throat> so I've got a couple of industry examples here uh, from XR training uh, with some stats that are, are live and, and kind of unbelievable, really. <laughs> and uh, I do know that Lockheed Martin, um, I don't have Lockheed Martin's on here, but I know that their uh, results were actually so good <laughs> They had to go back and do them and reduce the number because the shareholders wouldn't believe it. Um, so we're seeing things like 90% faster training at Walmart, uh, competency uh, being reduced by 80% at Sprint, and uh, decreasing training time for UPS by 60%. And Delta's airline uh, VR maintenance training is already saving uh, at least one-tenth of the cost. So the results are starting to come in. Uh, they're almost, as I said, unbelievable because this technology is able to take us where we've never been before. <clears throat> so I'm going to give you a few examples on different ways to learn and train and things that, uh, that we're kind of involved in. Uh, 360 VR training, this is an example of even just taking a 360 photo and dropping in um, you know, bubbled um, points of interest of where things need to be laid out in a store. Um, that can be easily deployed with a 360 camera and um, building that into a training application for, for the customer. <clears throat> this is a video of, oh, sorry, um, just give you, I'm just going to mute it. It's just a bit of uh, background there. So, um, this is a gas line uh, training application with realistic 3D environments. Um, and uh, there's over a million different configurations that could happen in this scenario. How does one even begin to train for that in a manual? <laughs> so being able to do this in VR with 
the possible one million different explanations is something that um, virtual reality offers as a great training tool to to um, to uh, make sure that the trainer is safe when they're deploying something like this and uh, they can get the job done. Um, pilots <laughs> are starting to use uh, virtual reality training and there's a couple of simulations that are out there. Obviously the Air Force and, and uh, airline workers have been using tra simulation training multiple times before but they were never really evaluated on uh, eye tracking and, um, and their performance with an analytics package. So, uh, so pilots are starting to, to use those, uh, airlines are starting to have pilots uh, use these a lot more. Um, this is a, it's a de-icer training. And uh, while it seems very, um, shall we say, doesn't seem that hard to do, Apparently, it is quite tricky, and um, virtual reality offers a training aspect that um, you know you can't learn off of a, a VR training manual itself. So, being able to sit in that chair and de-ice a plane without the cost of actually going out and doing it is is hugely beneficial. Again, Lockheed Martin. Um, I'll give you an example of a situation uh, when. Alan met with Shelley, who is in charge of the Lockheed Martin VR operations. She said that they had this machine that they needed to screw bolts into. And the old way was to go and screw a bolt in, go back over here and document it, and then type it into the computer, send it off to the supervisor, come back over, do another bolt come back over here documented on paper. Imagine the time that that takes and the chain of reaction and instead putting on a HoloLens and being able to look at that machine, pick up those screws bolts, having that digital overlay, that data is then automatically recorded and sent to that supervisor so that guy can keep going. Imagine the time that's sent, saved right there and that cost and that's where they're starting to see um, these hugely impactful ways that virtual reality and augmented reality training is impacting their business. Uh, wrench mechanic training, I'm not too sure about this one, but it's, you know, uh, I came across a training application the other day that was just how to use a drill. And some people don't know how to use a drill properly. And why not give it that training to them inside of VR? Um, so we're going to start to see all of these different applications of training that um, may see simple in one ways, but for somebody who's never done it before, this is a perfect way for them to try things out without hurting themselves and obviously evaluating what that user and how they're using that product or tool to the best of the abilities. Bus driver VR training. So driver training apparently is a really is in really big demand uh, for a lot of places around the world. But in this particular case, uh, this company actually trains their bus drivers on soft skills training and how to interact with the passengers and making sure that they're doing everything that they're supposed to do. So um, this is just one way of, uh, another way of um, how virtual reality training is impacting even just the simplest of a bus driver. Um, this is the uh, MICA, Magic Leap MICA, a uh, virtual reality companion. And I think this is kind of sort of the stem of the conversation of avatars and, and how they'll be able to help us with these remote assists and, and interactions and things like that. So um, this was just a quick video that we took um, and having the, the Magic Leap uh, companion guide the user through their interaction. <clears throat> ZSpace. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody's ever heard of ZSpace. This is a great way uh, to engage learning. And what they've done is they've, uh, ZSpace has actually built out these devices where you put on these glasses, just like this girl's wearing here, and um, using a pen, they're able to grab things out of their computer and look at them in three dimensions right in front of their eyes. Uh, this is changing learning right at the high school level, obviously being able to Pull, pull items out of their computer and take a closer look, dissecting them uh, and all sorts of things, taking a look at uh, 
<laughs> the skeleton jumping out of the, the screen, how much more engaging and interesting this is as curriculum. I wish they had it when I was a kid. <laughs> Crane training. So um, there's a couple of companies that are actually doing this, but uh, the retention rates and training rates around the, the VR training in, uh, for cranes is actually doing really well, just like excavator training and, uh, and things where you can actually go in there and pull the levers and direct yourself through uh, a series of actions that are required by the crane training without damaging anything and, and being tested. And I know Alan actually tried this as well, and he was able to to take the training and go into a crane and actually know and understand, know and understand how, uh, uh, how to use the levers. Another aspect. Forklift training. Again, it comes back to driver training. Apparently, uh, we're supposed to use VR for a lot of this driver training, which, um, you know, right now, we usually just get in the driver's seat and good luck and go with it. Um, but this obviously outlines a lot of the safety procedures and things that have to take place when, uh, when you're driving in an industrial type of situation. Uh, I believe that's Charlie Fink, if anybody knows him from Convergence. Um, he's trying the, the forklift training at AWE. Um, Caterpillar 8 AR maintenance. This is another one uh, where overlaying the digital data on top of the machine to understand how to fix and repair it. That's another way of understanding how to, uh, how to fix things and um, replace filters or um, figuring out where the oil goes. Um, automatically, somebody who has uh, AR glasses that can oversee this data will understand what to do first. Remote assistance, and we had this conversation even at lunch today. Um, this will be huge. Uh, remote assistance will certainly help the, um, the future of training when we have a massive population that is about to retire. So you've got somebody who normally runs a maintenance department, has done it for 40 years, he wants to retire. He can now sit at home and remotely assist somebody who's on the site job training uh, using some of these technologies. And I think this is kind of, you know, the, the remote assist will be the saver of how we're going to evolutionize some of these uh, new students into, into these new roles. Oil and gas training, it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, and all of these uh, training applications are being developed now to overlay the data on top of these machines. <clears throat> There's the Lockheed Martin training I was just mentioning and how they can overlay the data into all of these different locations where the screws have to go and document every single one. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, firefighter VR training, uh, that's a big one. Um, and uh, there's some great companies out there that are already dealing with this. And, and uh, what better way to train a firefighter in a fake fire than a real one? Um, and while they don't have, obviously, the um, all of the applications of it. Um, there are haptics that are coming out that will give the force feedback of, of, um, of the fire hose, and obviously scent machines and things like that will enhance that experience. So being able to evaluate firefighters through VR training. Police VR training, simulations. Um, I, don't, I think this is a no-brainer for a lot of us, just understanding from a police point of view even um, you know, talking somebody off of a, a ledge. I think I've got that one there. Yeah, talking somebody off the ledge, um, being in a situation where there's hostages and things like this. This type of training is uh, is uh, no brainer to be able to introduce all the different scenarios and be able to practice those instead of in real life. <clears throat> I think we've got a lot of police training in here, <laughs> military training. Um, I think that's, uh, that's something that's taking place already. There, these, this team's wearing Magic Leap, and, um, and there's also, I know in this particular scenario, they had scent machines and things like that to set up the actual scenarios for the, for the team to train. Uh, just a photo of uh, the Walmart training. Um, they, the company Striver obviously um, set this up, and they've already begun to see the different types of roles that can be applied to different employees. So when they, and this was something they weren't expecting, so they rolled out this VR training aspect and then they started to add in um, analytics and they found that some employees who were just stock people 
actually had some of the qualities that were best to lead teams. So they managed to discover some of their own employees could be put into different positions that were, they were never expecting before. And I think this is the surprise element of this technology is, is discovering all the different ways that uh, uh, this technology can enhance or uh, bring benefits to companies. Uh, and as you can see, Ed's got VR training going on there. Um, it's for every single age group. Kids love VR, obviously. Um, and uh, we've got um, avatars that are starting to become available to help people in certain rooms and learning, uh, learning situations. Um, this is a photo of the National Space Center's X-Lab. Um, that's already in existence. Uh, they've got everything from the 4D th theater testing uh, to the 360 3D full dome and the work workstation. So um, that's something that uh, the Space Center's X Lab is offering. Um, Xenial Digital has a great amount of XR learning modules, and um, uh, we're working with them to activate some of the, the modules in classrooms today. Um, David Attenborough, there's a great experience out there on the British Natural History Museum. And I think this is a great way to learn about history and, and uh, artifacts from the past. And David Attenborough actually hosts this particular uh, experience. If you haven't seen it, it's really cool. Um, Tailspin. I don't think there's, there's a video on this. Um, my apologies. I think Tailspin, uh, they, they've, they're working on um, avatars and uh, they actually created this experience where uh, you have to fire, fire this guy. Um, I can't remember, Barry, that's his name, Barry. And um, this, this experience has gone kind of worldwide on, on being able to take that, this experience into workplaces and, and, and train on human resources techniques. And um, this is something that we'll start to see more and more about soft skills training. So that's, that's a little bit about Tailspin. Uh, there's some great VR Air training companies out there. Um, everything from InnoActive, Striver, PTC is a great one that's working very heavily in industry. Um, Aether and Eon Reality, UbiMax, upskill. Um, just finally on avatars, I guess we're kind of heading towards the deep fake and uh, understanding who's real and who's not. Um, but all of these avatars will become engaged in that learning lesson of the future. And uh, I guess you kind of have to decipher who's who and who's real. Um, Hi, well, kind of here, I'll Mike, really. play this. this I don't... Digital Human Project, which is a collaboration of a whole lot of companies, Epic Games, Trilateral, Cubic Motion, Tencent, uh, the Wiki Human Team, Sydney Uni, FX Guide, a whole bunch of people coming together well, a virtual human, and not only a virtual human, but one rendered in real time, puppeteered or driven in real time, rendered in real time, and not only that, but at 90 frames a second in stereo in VR. We kind of hit that whole uncanny valley right at, well, a little bit earlier on. This video is a little bit earlier, but as you can tell, the technology is coming fast and furious, and, and uh, these avatars will be um, in a lot of our different experiences and helping us guide us through, uh, through the work that we have to do or the lessons that we need to learn. Um, haptics, uh, I want to touch briefly on this. Um, haptics are becoming really important to the, to the whole touch and feel and immersiveness of these experiences. And I wanted to share um, a little bit about this experience that Alan had, um, he headed to a, a simulation summit in Florida a couple of weeks ago. And he tried out these, uh, um, these uh, gloves, which he was, it's a, um, it was an army, uh, medical army training simulation. And through the gloves, there's all these different uh, tubes um, that feed into the, to the fingertips. And he was asked to help a medical in a medical situation. So he goes in and he puts his headset on and he put these gloves on and the guy who was guiding him said, <coughs> excuse me, um, said, uh, you know, you've got to save this guy. And he was inside a bunker. The door over here, there was a guy with a gun shooting out into the streets 
because there was war going on. And in front of Alan, he had a guy writhing in pain. And the guy says to him, he says, okay, you've got to save him, figure out where he's bleeding. And he reaches out and he can touch him. And he rolled him over using these gloves. And through these gloves, the guy says, okay, you need to get the turn kit and you need to fix him. So he's looking and he looks down and he's okay here, he's over here. And he looks over here and the guy's foot's missing and there's blood spurting out on the wall. And Alan's got to save this guy. Meanwhile, this guy's over here, he's shooting out into the street. So Alan grabbed the turn kit and managed to turn. And then he's like, you got to give him a needle. So Alan gets the needle out and <laughs> it's funny because Alan will talk about it today. He goes, I think I still have PTSD. Um, but when he touched the needle, he was shocked and he jumped because it was real. It felt real. And it was literally just the, the piping of the air into the, into the glove itself that gave him that shock. But he felt that needle and then he had to give the needle. So he had to literally, you know, inject it into his arm and the blood was still spurting out over here, so he had to go and turn it more, uh, the turn kit more to stop the bleeding and wrap it. But all of this was in VR. And everything he felt, he actually, when he took off the headset right after this experience, he had to go and sit and take five. He was, he was seriously impacted by that experience. And it just goes to show what haptics are gonna now do to these VR experiences for the future. Uh, scent machines, and uh, <laughs> this is an example of one of the scent machines that's out there by Vaxo. And uh, everything from fish to smelling something burnt to a lady to ramen and grass can be implemented into the experiences now. Volumetric capture. Uh, I'm going to run through these really quick. I wasn't expecting to go this long, sorry. Volumetric capture, I just wanted to show you how many capture stage, stages there are around the world. Uh, this was taken uh, in Q2, 2019. Um, so you can see that the volumetric capture stages are going to become really important because we're going to need to take those holograms and start implementing them into the VR experiences. Uh, spatial audio, obviously very important to any kind of experience and and there's a lot of great studios uh, around the world that are dealing with that. Uh, this is an example of another spatial audio um, that, was, uh, that was being built in the US. VR in a box, what a great way to have, uh, to be able to transport that to your teams. Um, this is just another example. And uh, just quickly, I wanted to give you this. This was from one of my other presentations, just on the past jobs, present jobs, and then the future jobs. And we need to build these learning uh, applications and education systems to help build these jobs to support this industry. So um, yeah, just a quick there. And finally, uh, VR revenues projected to reach 14.8 billion by 2023. This is the most recent report that just came out from Artillery Intelligence. Um, basically, anybody who's in this industry will do well. There's gonna be a job for everybody. Uh, but we have a lot of educating to do to be able to increase the population of people beyond this room and uh, teach those around us. So our mission is to inspire and educate the next generation of youth to think and act like entrepreneurs in an economically, socially, and environmentally sustainable way. And in order to realize this mission, we need to leverage the most advanced technologies and tools in the world and do it now. To learn more, uh, there's some learning for you. This is where we kind of capture all of our learning. Take a photo of that. <laughs> and uh, sign up for our XR for Business uh, newsletter and listen to the podcast. That's how I learn every, every day. Um, I listen to at least one thing to kind of expand my, my own personal knowledge. And uh, it's one thing that I try to encourage everybody else to do as well. And thank you very much. <laughs>